Hi everybody, today we're going to be going through galvanic cells and how they work. Okay, so basically with galvanic cells, we're looking at an oxidate, a redox reaction, okay, and we're taking advantage of the fact that there's electrons that flow from one substance to another. Okay, so we incorporate that in our galvanic cell. Now basically, the first thing that you need for a galvanic cell is you need, generally, you just use two beakers. Okay, maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. My beak, better. Okay, so we have a test tube here, and a beaker here, and a beaker there. And inside that beaker we have a solution. It's called an electrolyte. We'll talk about what the point of an electrolyte is in a moment. Then, we have also got generally electrodes. Now these pictures can vary. It really, um, as long as you know what is occurring, you'll be okay. So, we have a voltmeter and we also can, we also must have some form of a salt bridge. Okay, so this here is called an electrode as well as that one. Electrode. This is the external circuit outside here. This is the salt bridge. Okay, and yeah, that's basically all the components of it. So let's have a look at how this actually works. I'll just get rid of these here um, and there. Okay, and I'll give you two reactions. First of all, copper, two plus, plus two electrons, gives us copper solid. Secondly, zinc. 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, gives us zinc solid. Okay, so we have those following two equations. Now, they're in order of what they are on the electrochemical series, okay? So, these are both just taken directly from the electrochemical series. And what we can do is we can figure out whether or not this is going to be in spontaneous reaction. Now, Basically, what we'll find with spontaneous reactions is that the thing that wants electrons more, okay, once has better power with electrons, is always the reaction at the top of your electrochemical series, okay? So even though these are uh, quite, they're both metals, even though they're both metals and they generally want to lose electrons, when you put them together, copper actually will gain electrons. Okay, and zinc will want to lose electrons because it's lower down. So copper is the stronger, stronger uh, oxidant. Okay, now let's have a look at how we make this prediction. So we know that copper is going to want to gain electrons, right? So let's just say that this is copper for now. This electrode is copper. Uh, okay, and electrons must flow towards copper. So that's a flow of electrons. Now, what we find is that those electrons have to come from somewhere, so they have to come from zinc. And what we also find is that for electrons to be motivated enough to actually move here, we also need to make this, this electrode must be positive. And this electrode must be negative because there will be nothing really pushing the electrons to go over to that side, okay? Just because electrons are, you know, are lost from zinc, it doesn't mean that they will get motivated to get pushed here. If this is positive, for instance, if this solution turns positive for some reason, which is known as polar polarization, if it's positive, then the electrons will just crowd around here and they won't be motivated to move. But when you make the electrode here positive and you make that solution neutral, both of them, then basically your electrons will be moved. Okay, so because zinc, because zinc is producing the electrons, then um, obviously our equation here is the wrong way round. Okay, notice how these are back and forth reactions. So basically you can flip it around and it's still correct. So we need to just flip that around. We need to make zinc solid. Give us zinc 2 plus, 
plus two electrons. The electrons in that circuit must actually come from somewhere. And that's from zinc breaking down. So basically what we'll find is we'll find that as the electrons go to copper and accumulate here, as they start accumulating on the metal surface, inside here we have electrolytes. So we generally dissolve like copper sulfate or something, but we basically have a, a high amount of copper here, copper ions, right? And those copper ions are going to be attracted to your electrons. And as you can see, copper ions and two electrons will produce copper solid. So slowly what you're going to have is you're going to have the positivity here to decrease because that will be used up, that will be used up, for instance. And you'll find that the electrode it becomes actually bigger. It, it, it has an accumulation of copper on it, okay, because copper solid. So that increases in mass, okay. And what you'll find on this side, on this side here, is that you also have, you know, zinc ions in your electrode, electrolyte. Okay, and what you'll find is in order for zinc to break down, it will produce zinc ions as well as two electrons. So the electrons will have to move off in the external wire, but what you'll find is because you're producing continuously zinc um, and breaking down the zinc metal, then you'll slowly find that you get even more zinc ions in there, which is not too great having more added in. Now, why is it not too great? It's because electrons need to be motivated to flow through the external wire. They cannot, if, you, if this becomes more positive, okay, which it does because zinc breaks down to produce that. If this becomes more positive, then the electrons will just sit here. You know, they won't flow in the external wire. So this is why it's so important to have a salt bridge because a salt bridge, what it does, it, is, it has potassium nitrate. Now, potassium nitrate can be broken down into K plus and NO3 minus, okay? So you'll find that the nitrate flows into that beaker and you find that the potassium flows into that beaker there and so what happens is that the the half cells electrolyte solution become neutral they don't have any charge and not meant to have a charge so that's basically why it's really important to have a salt bridge to prevent polarization which means that the solution actually changes its charge okay so let's just write out an overall reaction for all this so this is what's going to happen copper if you add these together to get an overall reaction because these are just half equations copper solid oops sorry that's not copper solid i rubbed out my two plus copper two plus is going to Together with zinc, it's going to produce copper. Notice how you no longer need double equations, like back and forth. And it's going to produce zinc. That is your overall reaction. Okay, so you'll find that Yes, that, you find that you can, the electrons must cancel from your overall reaction, you can't have them there. And the last thing I just wanted to speak about is when you have an electrochemical, when you have a galvanic cell set up, and here are your electrodes, your voltmeter, your electrolyte, whatever direction the electrons are flowing, current is the other way around. Current is described by I. Okay, and it's going the opposite way around. So just in case you have to label that, it will be useful to you. And finally, the negative and the positive charges that we find, the electrode with a negative charge is referred to as the anode, and the electrode with a positive charge is referred to as the cathode. Okay, so I hope you learned something today. Hope that made sense. And in the next few tutorials, what we're going to be doing is going through more problems um, and, yeah, more challenging problems. So keep tuned and have a great day. See you.